Okay, um, I want to make a video today, another video on Manson, but focusing more on Evan Richard Wood. I know some being all over the place, it's hard to take all these girls. You know, Ashley Morgan said, "Ask girls, no, you were 27, you're not a girl, you're a woman. But anyway, it's hard to take all these females um, in the accusations and the madness and just like the insanity that these things are producing in my brain and a lot of everybody else's that I know. I don't know one person in my life, my personal life, I don't know one person that supports Amber or Amber Rachel Wood or Esme Bianco, Ashley Morgan. Everybody that I know, maybe I know people kind of like from like all walks of life, they all think Johnny is innocent and with Manson maybe some of their 50-50. So what is this? Propaganda and how did it come that they have to rub it on our face and put it in people's magazines with his name and treat the guy like a criminal on a civil lawsuit, not a criminal lawsuit? Because that's the thing. They're making you believe that he's being sued criminally and he's not. The lawsuit from um, Esme Bianco, remember the one that got human trafficked and all that? Anyway, uh, that's a civil lawsuit and that's just for money as he's attorney just came out and said that the reason that she's filing this is because they did not accept her crazy money request so um yeah remember when michael jackson had to settle out with people and have to give them money to settle the 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 case because he didn't want to he couldn't mentally and physically go through all through the whole case well this is exactly what they're doing and i think in a, michael jackson was innocent or not I think he was, but I'm saying the point of when people just try to squeeze you and try to get money out of you, you have to be strong and stay in your position if you know that you're innocent. But like, no, no. And it's really sad people like Michael Jackson and all the people in the past have to give money to um, to the victims just because they didn't want to deal with the stress of the trial, which is pretty stressful and is really traumatizing to go through the local Johnny and Amber are going through right now. It's hard as fuck. So, um, but I'm kind of proud of uh, Manson for not not giving in to her crazy request from Esme Bianco. So, well, well, go back. <laughs> go back to Evan Roger Wood. Evan Roger Wood had a little bit of a career uh, she made a really good movie called 13. Well, she made the movie. She was in the movie. You know, there's this thing with actors when they say, I made the movie, or no, you were. You were on it. You didn't make the movie. And, 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 you know, I mean, she was good in it, but I think anybody with an awesome role that it was written really well by the writers, anybody would have done a good job. So I'm not going to say that she's the best actress ever. So then she did a couple, a couple of the things when she played off the Lolita, uh, is, is, is spooky, scary, manipulative, dark image for another movie that she made, and then she met the guy, right, Brian. <laughs> so, in more than one, I mean, this is not a one-time thing that I'm looking at. There's at least at least five or six publications and then she talks about her looks and how she was obsessed with hard-shaped glasses um, when she was a kid, so before him, and how she always changed her looks and her appearance because she she's an actress or she's a clean slate, so she kind of like takes into the to the person that she is with uh, and we know this because she turns into the person that she is with. Just like she did with Manson. That was not him forcing her. It was her choice, allegedly, what I think. Um, and in so many interviews, not only she talks about how brave the relationship was and all that, but also how much control she had during it, the relationship. You can say, well, okay, she was being groomed. I think that term is thrown out. I think people don't really know what groom is. Being groomed does not... It's not these girls in Hollywood. They're hanging out with a rock star and they didn't like what he did to them in the bed a couple times. So then now they are, the guy's a criminal. That's not being groomed. Being groomed is something completely different and it's related to pedophiles 
And even you were not ever with a pedophile that we know of. If you were, I'm sorry, but I don't think you were. And when Ashley Morgan goes on People's Magazine saying that I want, I want to talk about this so this doesn't happen to other girls. Girls? What is she talking about, girls? Like, you were on the... Esme Bianco was 31. Ashley Morgan was 26, 27 when this happens. And all the other ones, too. Evan is the only one who was really young, 19 years old. But you're not a girl anymore, even in 19. Can we say that... Mm, it's kind of mm, uh, to be 19 and be with a guy just way older than you hmm, maybe he should have thought about it yes <laughs> yes he should have thought about it twice but then again I can't really judge into people's um, hearts and where they fell and who they fell in love with right but the only thing that he's guilty of if you ask me is of opening himself up and not being careful to who he was given the keys to his apartment to and having all these people coming over to do photo shoots and and girls that he just met a week ago moving in with him that's the one thing that he's guilty of and be way too trusting with people that's what i think uh what i think what rose mcgowan thinks what dita bontis thinks what a lot of people on youtube thinks so um another thing Another thing I was thinking about, in life, in my life, my personal life, um, I don't know anybody that thinks that he did it. And I don't know anybody who th that thinks that Johnny is guilty. And I know people from all walks of life. And I know people, uh, older people, way older than me. And I know people younger than me. They're in their 20s. And I know millennials in their 30s. And... Of course, I don't discuss these things with my children. Of course not. But I know, you know, people my age, I'm 43. So I know people in their 65, 70 years old that I work with. Nobody thinks this is actually a thing that happened. So who, so who is, who, who is it? <laughs> Who's doing this? Who is rubbing this in our face? as uh, a really messed up propaganda moment that we're living in to kind of maybe distract you from the real issues that are happening in the world 2020 COVID 2021 vaccines I don't know um Israel Palestine like bombs war I don't know maybe that's what it is or maybe it's just without being so conspiracy theorist maybe they're not trying to distract you from anything maybe this just happens because these women not girls are being given way too much uh, camera time. Way too much camera time. And I, I have uh, to blame Amber Heard on this because I don't think Esme Bianco and Ashley Morgan and all those girls will go on this so hardcore as they're doing if it wasn't that they saw what Amber Heard was getting and all the attention that she was getting and the money and the, and the all that stuff. So shame on you, Amber. It's all related. Don't think for a moment that it's not. Um, so this one, for example, is Nylon Magazine, back in the day. Mm -hmm. All right. And I remember reading this back in the day, and I remember thinking, what an idiot. <laughs> I remember thinking that he was an idiot for being with her. And I remember thinking, what an idiot she is. She's like talking like she discovered America because she just had heart-shaped glasses and she's with a rock star. Girl, I mean, like, how many people before been in through your shoes? Like, people like groupies, people that marry, you know, Jim Morrison's wife, Courtney Love, Kurt Cobain's wife. I mean, there's plenty of people that marry rock stars uh, or they're engaged to them. I don't know why you think this is so cool. But anyway, in this few magazines... <laughs> few interview magazines back in the day she was so she was showing it off so 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 much and uh, in a lot of these things she wouldn't even talk about her career she would only talk about how cool it is to be with him and if you notice it's, that's what she's doing right now she's talking about how messed up it was to be with him so where are you at what do you do where's your career where why you never hear why you never talk about about your son why you never talk about your mom and dad? She only uses her son thing and the mom and dad thing when she's trying to make a point that is just egotistically narcissistic on herself. So she, for example, will say, 
yeah um i was very sheltered that's what i was so innocent uh my mom homeschooled me and i was very innocent that's the only time she will mention mom and dad to say to use the words mom and dad for something that is just about her uh when she mentions her son uh it's just to say that oh my gosh she's a single mother and she works so hard um and that pissed me off for obvious reasons um so she's using those terms she's using people and again just like amber did oh i'm bisexual just like amber did poopy doo they're using all this stuff yeah it, it is true you are a single mom it is true you're bisexual it is true your parents um were in the industry it is true but you just can't milk it <laughs> i'm just yeah, i don't I hate to but that's the word for it so yeah she does mention mom and dad once in a while she mentions some director they shape the form of her career but if you think about it and if you watch her and read her stuff from 2007 to to now it's all about her and in this on this one is all about her and manson so and this one she's saying that this is like very uh, um i mean if they take this to court um it's gonna look very bad for the women i'm not gonna say girls because you're not girls um and this stuff cannot be fabricated this is in a magazine and it's online and it was published real paper back in the day when people read magazines um in the 2000s you can't say that this didn't happen because it's right there from your own mouth you know in all your glory you're making a photo shoot that you are tied up to a chair and stuff like that it's all good you know if that's what you're doing we're you gonna say that Terry Richardson the photographer make you do it he he said you better tie yourself up to a chair ah no so kind of it's, it's all the same thing it's just for you know her need of keep being the victim because that's all she knows how to do I mean she's a good actress that's what I don't understand what the hell she's doing because that's my uncle or a Game of Thrones nothing what else Ashley Morgan has no existence career Ashley Waters is just an assistant in in LA which is a good job to have but you know she's not that successful so the other ones that you understand they're kind of they're going for the gold Evan is just probably the worst of all of them because it's not related to money or to connections she's not getting no connections from this it's just about her psyche and her brain and how much she wants to be on on feeling this constant high and people giving her attention for things that didn't happen or if it happened it happened with somebody else uh or things that other people did to her and i do believe that happened and that sucks and i wish that when that happened she would have just gone to the police instead of just going to the Phoenix Act and, and hang out at Congress and try to pass laws, the first thing she should have done is gone to the police. But she didn't. So now that's what we have all this mess. Um, and, and it's a mess. It's a hot mess. So in many interviews even talks about her obsession with hardship glasses. I also know that her mother, Emma's mother, did not really approve of her reading the book. Lolita. It's a book. Before it was a movie, it's a book, Okay. And um, I read it and I have it, no big deal, but it's a book that a lot of people swear they love. They're their favorite book. It is not my favorite book at all. But um, usually when girls in the industry want to be edgy, you know, they go, oh, well, I love Lolita. And it's like a thing. It's just, it's a thing. So anyway, so um, even they reveal to Nylon Magazine that she began dressing in a Lolita style in collecting heart-shaped glasses hmm yeah in her teen years so that's like from that could be 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 all the way up right so we see evan who was obsessed with alita putting this i think projecting this on manson later and there's nothing wrong with alita uh, i mean i don't i don't like it i don't think they would the women should dress as little girls i think it's kind of pedo and kind of messed up but it's not illegal it's not illegal to read the book it's not illegal to dress like that 
um, I don't like it. I don't. I don't think it's. Um, no, I don't think a pedophile friendly is a good look. But it's not illegal, you know. But she was doing. She was doing her thing. And Marilyn Manson interview. She spoke. He spoke of how he Manson said how Evan turned up at his home, the first time that they they like the first date and stuff, wearing hardship glasses, which inspired him to create the song about her and her hardship glasses. Don't break my heart, or I will have to break your hardship glasses, right? And then I made the video for it. So she showed up in their first meeting. They call it meeting. The first date or the first hanging out moment. Already wearing the glasses. And I think already with some weird agenda in her mind. I think at the time she maybe didn't know exactly what was. She didn't plan this whole thing since she was 18. No, there's no way. But at the time she so I was like, oh, you know, I'm bored. I don't want to, I mean, this Hollywood thing is like, miss, it's boring. I just want to be crazy and I want to, I want to piss off my parents and I want to be rebellious and I'm going to use this guy. I think that's exactly what she thought. Uh, I don't know why I think that and I can't say I witness it or I know people that witness it and this time I witness all the things and I know people that know all the people but with her I can't actually say for sure that that's what happened but I can say that I believe that that's what happened because usually girls that play on that Lolita uh, part are not really innocent they just look like they are and they usually have their own agenda you know the whole like the whole sugar daddy thing, right? There's a sugar daddy, there's a sugar baby, right? You can't have a sugar daddy without a sugar baby or a Lolita baby girl uh, girl thingy. And there's not prostitutes, they're not sex workers, okay? They're just girls are hanging out with some guys so they can buy them stuff. And sometimes they put them through medical school and they, they pay for their bills. Again, illegal? No. Messed up, kind of dirty, yucky, yeah. Uh, but see, it's like saying sugar daddy. It's like saying the whole daddy thing. Um, that's a big thing. We know that, right? So she was banking on that. She was banking on this little girl, hardship glasses type of thing. And she was only 19 and he was already, he was too old for to be playing games like this. And I said, the one thing that I could probably blame on him is that he should, uh, uh, you know, one of my friends, uh, one of my friends, Jason, he always says, don't stir it your thing in crazy you know I mean <laughs> I mean we all kind of crazy and we all have our fantasies and our weird darkness stuff but this girl was beyond since day one um, and it's not her parents fault I'm not gonna say there's other channels saying that it's the way she was raised and because she was homeschool um, my kids are homeschool I'm not I'm not it's not about overly sheltering somebody. Being homeschooled is just a little bit of a difference. But then you have all social gatherings you go to. Like you're homeschooled, but you have art, and you have baseball, and you have swimming lessons, and you have therapy, and you have counseling. You're not just in your house all day. People think homeschool is just like that. Maybe it was like that, you know, 200 years ago. <laughs> but not anymore. So when she when she kind of says it's kind of like her parents sheltered her so much that so she didn't know what life was about. I, if I was her mom, I will kind of I'll be offended a bit because I'll be like, I did all this for you, <laughs> and I teach you all this stuff, and I and I put my career aside to be your homeschool mother, and now you kind of put it on me. And she did that a couple times. And she never, she never say her dad abuser or anything like that. Please don't start telling me that I said that because I didn't say that. She never said that that it was abuse. But she did say that her parents didn't help her with the world. So then she was very, 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 very innocent, which I think is BS. And it's kind of insulting to her mom, to tell you the truth. Uh, but that might just be uh, being touching a, a personal nerve right there. So, here we have Evan Rachel Wood's mother, okay, saying that she doesn't like the evidence reading Lolita and stuff. So, Evan reveals against this mother, Hollywood, the, her father, mostly her mother, right? Which isn't that happens all the time, but it just happens beyond, beyond closed doors and not to celebrities, so we don't know about it. But I know about it because it does, it happens all the time. 
that these girls, um, sometimes boys do, will uh, boys don't really do this thing, these things until they are older for some reason. Uh, but kids do it in general, um, and they're gonna do things to piss you off, um, to rebel against you, and uh, it is just part of human nature. But the thing is, it's supposed to be a phase that we go through. But then, if you if you if you take that phase that you and you live on that phase the rest of your life, you know, and you're trying to milk on that and to and, and to make it worse than it was. I said, well, it was a playful time. I was dressed up as Lolita, and we were playing on this whole Lolita older guy fantasy thing. And that's it. Leave it at that. No, but she had to make a whole career out of it and a whole complaint out of it, and now a government law <laughs> out of it. And I think it's completely out of hand. I think she is completely out of her rocket. I, th I keep saying I think because it's just my opinion. Nobody else says, even if there's other people think like that, but I'm not going to say their names or the YouTube channels, names, or whatever. Uh, but we know there's a lot of people that think um, that Manson didn't do this horrendous acts to any of them. It's mostly her showing up to his house with wearing hardship glasses. I am not trying to say that she deserves to get raped or to get abused because of the way she dressed. No, 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 no. I'm trying to say that and in her Phoenix, Phoenix Act declaration, she said that she had no control over what she dressed like or what type of items she was using to dress herself with because she said Manson was controlling her outfits. So this is why I'm going to read this. I'm not reading it. I'm not talking about it in a sense of like, well, of course that's going to happen to you. Look how short your skirt is at. I will destroy somebody who says stuff like that about women. That is so messed up. Uh, but that's not the point I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is that she had an agenda already and it was to rebel against her mom and to be more edgy and to be like the next Rose McGowan. Think about it. Rose was also with Manson. Rose is a very good person, so I don't, I'm, I'm not putting them in the same basket at all. But she kind of did a Rose there, you know. Uh, but Rose wasn't really lying. Rose wasn't pretending. She was not pretending to be something she was not. Evan was. So she wanted to be edgy. It was it was cool. It was she was gonna be more you know, get more roles and be more edgy and have more fun and reveal against her mom, which it seems like it's a big thing for her because she mentioned in, in a couple other interviews and it's kinda a yucky because for what I can tell about her parents, they're just good people that try to give her the best that they could. So I don't know what's up with that. Um, I do think she wanted to be the next Rose McGowan. I think um, I think that's that's what's going on, um, and yeah. Okay, so her mother says that she's obsessed with Lolita. Her mother doesn't like that she's reading the book because not only is she the mom says that it's trash. Oh, this is funny. So eventually they will be okay. So I'm gonna go to her thing, her words, not just mine. She said. I do have an obsession with the Neville Hulk book. I collect heart-shaped glasses, maybe about 50 pairs right now. I don't know. I used to dress up like Lolita all the way to the one sock. Um, Lolita's character has um, these things that she does kind of to, just to get this guy and just for attention that she's wearing only one sock and it's, you know, because she has really cute feet and she's painting her toenails. Uh, in front of him in the garden. It's all this like sexual thing, kind of pedophile thing going on, right? But um, she was doing that. She says, uh, down to the one sock, I was hardcore into it. This is Evan saying this, not me. Did that freak out your parents? The person who's doing the interview says to her, don't forget your parents. Lolita is not exactly the most, um, the best role model for a teenage girl. Yeah, my mother was a little worried when she realized that I was reading that book. So, and loving it so much, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point after that. I was homeschooled since the seventh grade. Okay, I thought she was always homeschooled, but okay. Since seventh grade, I didn't have the required reading 
She's so full of shit. I'm sorry. She's so full of shit. When you are homeschool, you have the same reading uh, abilities and the same, or even more, and you have the same resources to books that if you're not homeschool. I'm sorry. Like, she's, what does she think? She thinks we're all ignorant. But this is not, you know, um, England in the 1700s. Homeschool kids read the same books the non homeschool kids read. Um, we got access, and this is before the internet, we went to the library, we got access to absolutely everything that we want to do, we want to read. Encyclopedias, you name it. Uh, I was reading books, I mean, I was, I was in that job when I was a kid. I was reading books on psychology and murder and criminology and vampires and weird shit like that when I was 14. I didn't do that to upset my mom. Well, maybe subconsciously I did, but I don't think I did. But I was into that. And I can't blame, I can't say my first boyfriend wanted to bite my neck or it was his fault. Well, maybe, you know, maybe if I was obsessed with the movie Dracula <laughs> when I was 14 years old and I was obsessed with that movie, maybe that played into my choice of guys or whatever I did after that. What about that? Why does, why does it have to be their fault? So I think this is the same thing. She's obsessed with Alita, so then she ended up with a guy who's all, older than her, and he happens to be also obsessed with Alita. In the movie, in the book, and Manson um, never denied it, okay? As he doesn't have to, he can like any books that he wants. Do I find it kinda, uh, yeah, I do, but, okay. Oh, this is for Vanity. Okay, now th that was magazine. This is this is not limit. This is another from Vanity Fair. Okay, before she said that she had about fifty pairs right now, and I used to dress up like Lolita, down to the one sock. I was hardcore. What your mother thought about it? Yeah, my mother was a little worried when she realized that I was reading it so much. I was homeschool since the seventh grade, so I didn't have the required reading. God, I can't. I can't stand how stupid she is. The required reading you usually get in public school. That's a lie. That's a lie. I know she's from North Carolina, but okay, that's still in the United States. So I know that if you want to have access to books, you have access to books. Okay, being homeschooled doesn't define the books you read. I mean, it's just she's so dumb. I wonder if she's dumb, but she's just mean. I don't know what she's trying to. to she's trying to make. Her mom looks so bad, like, <clears throat> you know, mom didn't have any more, any other books than Lolita going around because I was homeschooled, so I have to read whatever was in the house, and Lolita was there, so I read it. Evan, no, you can get a library card and go to the library, ride your bike or whatever you were doing, and get some books, free. You're not going to tell me for a second that being homeschooled is the reason that you were reading Lolita. Come on. My God, she just pissed me off. Should I get this mad? My heart blood, my blood pressure is going to go high. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, she doesn't get me this that mad. But when I, when I read something that, on the sense of her trying to say this happened to her because of she was homeschooled. This happened to her, to her because of her mom. This happened to her because of him. It's always the blame of somebody else on everything. Even this early interview she's already saying. She didn't have the resources to all the books because she was homeschooled. Big bullshit right there. So my mother, okay, 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 all right. I have brown, I have grown juice. This is really close. This is, this letter is so small. I'm really trying hard to read this and it's so small. I have grown up around adults. See, somebody else's fault, not hers. That happens because she grew, she grew up around adults. So how horrible. But I was a teenager with, among them. She says now, I was struggling in between the two as much as many of her roles have an intentional sexual induendo. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. Lolita quality to the roles she was playing at the time in movies. A reference that reflects back to the obsession with the book. Okay. She has since she has since she was a kid, and this is in red letters, my mom will say, I'm not paying for homeschool Exactly, mom. Exactly. I'm not paying for homeschool so that you can stay at home and you can read trash like Lolita. I love every rich school mom. 
I mean, that's, 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 she's cool. She's, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what she's up to right now. Is she still, what's the relationship? But I think it's pretty cool that she say, I'm not paying homeschool um, books, money, so you can stay home and read Lolita all day. Because it's trash. I mean, we can argue if it's trash or not, but her mom just straight up gave her the, the tea to her face right there. And I am like, imagine with her voice and I'm like what are you talking about mom it's it's Navajo it's a really big book will you prefer a reading invitation to a beheading so she's trying to say that um she's trying to say to her mom well this is a good book what do you want me to do do you want me to like do you want me to read some fake storybooks about white people killing Indians that's kind of what she's trying to say yeah Yes, that's what you should be reading when you are in 10th grade. You should be reading history books. Mm -hmm. And not trying to be badass and be and tell your mom, well, why do you want me to be reading history books? Yeah, girl, totally. <laughs> you can read Lolita maybe, you know, on the weekend sometimes, you know, and if, if you go on a trip or something and then you're in the car, your parents' car, and you're like bored, maybe read a little bit of Lolita, maybe read some comic books, maybe read some darker stuff. But it's not a homeschool book, okay? Like, knock it off. Anyway, to inspire her mother, even start dressing like Lolita, this is what I really think. I'm reading it because I typed it earlier, but this is what I really think. I'm not copying from the magazine. The magazine won't ever say this. Marilyn Manson helped her with this, not only by writing a, pretty much a, an anthem to the young theme of Lolita called Hardship Glasses, the song, and pretty much the whole album is uh, dedicated to her and their love relationship craziness. Every song, If I Was Your Vampire and all this thing is, is really related to her. No wonder why I don't like that album that much. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, and I, I do and I don't for different reasons, but nothing to do with her. I just think that, um, I don't know. I just don't like that album so much. I can have my own opinion on that. So. She inspired him, right? She was not a victim. She inspired him to write this. This is good for her, good for him. It sounds like something that people do. Um, uh, with, like I'm saying, you know, Courtney Love, Kurt Cobain, you know, she's not the first person, the first edgy person that, that happens to be with a rock star. <laughs> I mean, she's talking about like she invented the thing. She invented the thing. Like being bisexual, she invented being bisexual. No, uh, maybe David Bowie did. <laughs> and the whole thing about being with a rock star is so crazy. Maybe Courtney Love did it first. Uh, Rose McGowan did it first. Um, the, the, the wife of Gene Simmons from Kiss. You know, the wife, um, Steven Tyler from Aerosmith, wife. You don't see those women papi down be like oh yeah i met mary a rock star yeah and so no they just did they fell in love with a guy it happened to be a rock star they marry him it's not an accomplishment in life um in this time in this moment in 2008 she thought she was the shit because she was with him anyway i think she was just squeezing it and using him because you never hear any interviews or that i haven't heard any interviews with rose mcgowan that made it sound like that. Or with Dita Von Teese, they were more equal. Even if Dita wasn't as successful as he was, okay? They were more equal. Rose and Manson were equal. This sounds like a power trip. And not from him to her, but from her to him. Which is what a lot of people just don't understand. Um, that the abuse is the other way around. If there was abuse, it's the other way around. So she did this to spice her mother. I don't know what the dad was, what her father thought about it, but her mother already hated it. She said, I don't pay for homeschool books so you can stay at home all day reading that trash, referring to Alita. So yeah, my master helped her with that. Okay, her company is just like a prism. Her career got more edgy. She got to play a vampire in True Blood. You know, she would get those roles anyway because she is a good actress. So I'm not saying that, oh my gosh, she started acting because of Manson. That's the one thing I, I wish I can say that, but I can't. Um, but she definitely uh, had an edge more than all the actresses because she was with him. 
just with the same with Rose McGowan, same thing. Um, so he is giving people more than just bruises or cuts, oh, if, allegedly. It seems like, uh, remember when he did Mechanical Animals, which is my favorite Manson album in 99, he dedicated the album to her. E each song, not each song, but at least five songs of the album were tongue-in-cheek, read between the lines about Rose. And there's a song called Call My White and a video for the song Call My White that she's in it. They're playing the Kennedy and Jackie O uh, type of thing when Kennedy gets shot on the head and all that and Manson gets shot on the head and Rose is there and it's a beautiful, gorgeous video. And that I remember that's my favorite. To this day, that's my favorite Manson um, era right there because I think he was so damn happy. Uh, you the, the, during those interviews he starts smiling during that time. Before that, you couldn't catch a guy smiling. Uh, he made a beautiful album. I think he's always been inspired by the people he is with. I don't think that he was telling Rose what to wear. He was not telling Dita what to wear. Dita was wearing um, those awesome outfits because she felt like it, and he happened to like it as well. So there's this, this whole thing about um, not taking responsibility for anything that you do at all. You don't see Dita coming out and saying, well, yeah, um, he wanted me to wear black all the time and red lipstick. I mean, I would laugh. If she says that, she won't ever say that, but that would just be funny, right? Oh no, I'm just gonna try it. Oh yeah, they made the okay, they made the music video. Yeah, she sounds she in this interview it seems like she's a thrill seeker. She's doing it for the thrill of the rush, you know? And so much not only just to uh, make her mad or uh, her mother and her father pissed off or get them to be to worry about her about her well-being but also to make herself feel you know more edgy and get more roles more edgy roles or connect with people or just blame bore because she's is bore so she needs to go in in rock stars tour bus and have um she called it seven or eight months uh crazy honeymoon filled with drugs and sex and all that even she now she says she didn't like drugs even if her nickname was a snowflake um yeah and she did that to, to she did that to just experience life you know and if we let's say she didn't have parents let's say she was not doing that for her parents or to pissed off Hollywood a lot of these young actors do things to pissed off Hollywood you got the kids from Harry Potter you got kids like Macaulay Culkin, you got kids like even like Michael Jackson was very young when he started his career. Then when they grow up, they kind of start doing crazy shit. <laughs> and it's because they're doing it just to bre break away from the role of little kids. Like you got Mary, uh, Mary Kate Olsen, right? The Olsen twins. Remember all the scandals with the Olsen twins and the drugs and the heroin and all that? And I think a lot of it is because they're trying really hard to prove and to show you they're not babies anymore. So this is this is what Evan was doing, straight up. The more I think about it, the more I believe it. I'm not trying to convince anybody, this is what I believe. So, and there's another one, okay? Bear with me. So I got all this little because I have mixed with Ashley and God, and that one is not even worth the time right now, this moment. So there's another one, Um on um on her that she talks about kind of their breakup and she defends him a little bit okay nightly magazine 2010 so on this time they were not together anymore okay but she said on manson i mean dating marilyn manson is kind of impossible to keep that out of the house out of the spotlight oh my, oh my gosh out of the spotlight he had a hand he had oh my god let's just he had a hand in raising me I'm always gonna love the guy. She did this in 2010, okay? So when they're not together anymore, he's not right behind her saying, say this about me, say this about me. Just please, let me, just please say this. No, 2010, they were not together anymore. So she's saying he had her hand 
the, he had a hand in raising me. I am always going to love the guy. He's a genius. He's an amazing artist. We're still friends. Some things just are not meant to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then they asked about working with Woody Allen. Yeah, let you think of that. We know who Woody Allen is, right? Now he married his stepdaughter and all that. Okay. Manson is my ex. You don't decide who you fall in love with. But it's surprising that he had little but a terrible much of the good person. Surprising that he was he was such a good person. He was terrible and much of the good person. Okay. Defend him all the time. Saying that he was like a doctor. I think uh, Rose McGowan says that on her book too. They call him the doctor. And this is not insinuating about drugs. Is the fact that he was always... Um, on tour watching if people got hurt and trying to help out many times with Rose needed attention he would be the first one to give her medical attention or to drove her to a place that she would be getting medical attention and he was always attentive to details and Evan also said this many times that he couldn't even have you having a headache because he will make sure that oh my god let's see if, you know what can I do for you that type of person um, and, I, and I like people like that, even if they're not Manson. If people like that is what, you know, makes um, a, the world a better place. So I'm not saying this because Manson happened to like Manson. I would say this about anybody. Anybody, any, anybody who can just be a little bit kind um, and say, well, are you hurt? I can help you out. It's great. He, he just seems to be that person from what I'm reading from Dita and from Rose and some stuff from Lindsay even if she, Lindsay, his current wife, she never really went official but pictures and videos and stuff that they, they he seems very um, attentive to details and very much into the, the present moment and he said in interviews that he's very protective of the people he is with, he also said in an interview that he will kick somebody's ass if they rape somebody I mean, you know, people say that, so that doesn't make him not guilty. But I'm saying, kind of to illustrate his character, of what I think his character is, that um, he's not this criminal mastermind that people, some people are saying that he is. Another one in People's Magazine this time in 2011 goth girl gone good Evan Rocha Wood on movies Manson and being bisexual there you go to get it put it in there Manson bisexual is all about attention 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 she wasn't with him anymore 2011 so she's coming out of bisexual at that time because I remember she did and why why he has to be on why why his name is on the on her mouth why because she's just gonna use it for her advantage, the smart cookie. She was the quote unquote bad girl, see, because she tried to be like Rose McGowan, that's always been my theory, but just with blonde hair. Evan Roger Wood is seducing uh, film goers in George Clooney's latest film, oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, inspired her affair with Manson, was seized about celebrity websites, many of which suggested that it was that affair that might just broke the marriage of Manson and Dita Von Teese. I guess that's not too bad, right? To kind of be a little bit of a home record, but maybe not. Let's give it the benefit of the doubt and let's say that they got together after he got divorced. Okay. Just because a relationship ends, this is Evan saying this to People's Magazine, just because a relationship ends, it doesn't mean that it failed. It doesn't mean they fail it. She reflects on her own breakup with her former fiancé. Evan is since rumored to have required her love romance with British actor and Billy Elliot star Jamie Bell, which she then married Jamie Bell and had uh, a son with him, right? But this is 2011, so they were just getting together just now. I don't think I will be the person I am today without him. Manson, not Bell, Manson. He is inspiring. The timing was right and I felt a door was open to me so I could really explore and express myself and take risk. Dude, like take this to trial. <laughs> take this to trial. I read again. Okay. 
Just because a relationship ended, it doesn't mean that it failed. She reflects on her own breakup with former fiancé, Manson. Wood is since rumored to be with Jamie Bell, British actor. I don't think, quote unquote, Evan, I don't think I will be the person I am today without him. He's inspired me. The timing was right and I felt a door was open to me to really explore and express myself and take risk. And pissed off your mom. Right. And play on the, I'm the bad girl in Hollywood now. My God. I mean, seriously. I mean, I could just, everybody can make videos about this and I'm not the first one or the last one that's going to do it. Um, but I don't know if everybody is looking at this type of things that I'm looking at and seeing how it was the other way around and how she, if anything, she came, uh, my coffee. Yeah, I drink coffee with straws or whatever. <laughs> if anything, excuse me, if anything, who's, who's, who's using who? I mean, come on. <laughs> and I do think that she wanted to be just like Rose McGowan. And she couldn't. She she doesn't... My God, Rose is like right here. And evidence right here. Not only Rose is beautiful. She still is. But in, back in the day, my God, she was gorgeous. I remember I had... Um, the first time I dyed my hair black. My hair is not naturally blue-black. But the first time I dyed my hair black super super blue black was because of rose mcgowan i was like oh my god i want to look just like the girl in the doom generation movie which was her first movie and um yeah i'm that old i saw the doom generation in the movie theater i want to look just like her so i was like doing you know i was doing my, my skin a lot of white makeup and red lips and black hair now i don't have black hair anymore and um i was so into rose um then she got her thing she shaved her i'm not gonna think about what she did with me, me too, and all that, because that's nothing to do with Evan. No, it doesn't. I already made another video about that and what I really think about that, and how I am sure that they pressured Rose into making that video about Manson, because I think it's all politics. Because uh, go get the the book Brave by Rose McGowan. It's right here. Because you might not believe me. Oh my God, Mom, I don't pay for homeschool so I can read Rose McGowan's book. <laughs> um, all good things about him. Nothing but good things. Nothing but loving things. So you have to just take that into consideration. Just like with Johnny Depp's case. Take what his ex-girlfriends and ex-wives are saying as well about him. Not just the present, but also the past. The past is what shaped your present. The past is shape us as people right now. If it wasn't for your past, I mean, you won't be here. You'll be dead. So come on now. So the past, Evan Ritual's past, Esme Bianco's past, Ashley Morgan's past need to be examined, just like his past. They are talking about Johnny's drug addiction, okay? They're talking about Manson uh, cocaine addiction and, and sex addiction and weirdness and fetishes and stuff. Well, they need to talk about theirs too. They're as guilty as he is if he's guilty, but I don't think he is. More than Nightly Magazine. I mean, you could just look it up for yourself. It's, it was everywhere. Um, it's like Nightly Magazine. Everywhere to go. It got darker. It's the title. Oh, my God. On a Tuesday afternoon, the lobby of the Hollywood Roswell Hotel is nearly empty. Quite enough, the clacking of girls with high heels on the title floor. It all takes to make those who are here look up. And so dark and hazy she comes. That's probably what she had. Maybe she was a brunette by then or the blonde hair. I don't know. It takes a lot, a lot of blinking to adjust to Emma Rogers Wood shortly before we met. Her publicist called me to give me a quick rundown of what she'll be wearing so I don't miss her. That makes her so mixed. That's so stupid. Anyway, I can't help but think that if it wasn't on the lookout for a girl in a skirt and black sweater, I might have let her rush right by it. That's because, I think he's saying that because, you know, in L.A., it was just true. A lot of people are very casual and they're just walking around with flip-flops and shorts. So maybe the fact that she was already dressed up very Lolita-ish or goth or just elegant. I would say not goth, but elegant. Um, this guy was like, oh, okay, there she is. Nylon Magazine, okay, 2009. 
tall and wispy and with her eyes smoked to black eye shadow and her hair in a flip she looked like a melancholy 1950s housewife and not at all like the movie star that you would think she appeared quite at home in the congress gothic room on the uh, roswell hotel in holly boulevard they have a whole they have a gothic room with a bunch of candelabras and mirrors and candles and it's pretty cool i think that's what they're referring to i get the impression that if she wanted to hide she could just discreetly step behind the candelabra and be done with it it's referring to her dark and her her i mean i'm not saying that's a bad thing i i i had that i, I had that my whole life i think it's great it's great if you like candles and dark stuff it's great i do too but you have to be responsible for the the fact that you like that and not say that somebody else will make you like that that is so stupid stupid or insane i don't know which one okay that's why i was late i was waiting for room service so i could scarf something down she apologized her only request is for water she is 19 years old in this interview okay at the moment evan is calling the roseville, roseville home she is in the process of moving in with her boyfriend singer hello this is I like that they put singer because they never put singer. Singer Marilyn Manson and they're staying at the hotel until they find a house in LA. She returned to LA from two weeks in New York when she was helping workshop children and next Broadway musicals, blah, 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 blah. Oh, when she did Across the Universe, the musical. Okay. So they're looking for houses right there, right? She's 19. They're looking for houses, okay? She looks like a 1950s housewife. The journalist happened to say that. So she's already having that look. The look that she says the Manson forced her into have. What is equally, um, you know, you have no idea. Oh, she said, you have no idea. I don't even look at Julie as a person. She's this goddess. She's talking about her director. She has a flair for exaggerating things. I know I do it too, but she has a, she, she's always like, she's with an, she's working for this director and she has to, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Everything has to be so dramatic. This is what I, I'm tending to believe that she has a personality disorder because why does she have to put people on the pedestal all the time and then, and then brought them down? She does this, she did it with Jamie Bell and then she took a lot of shit about him. But at the moment it was like, oh my God, the best thing that happened to me seriously okay and then she's talking about across the universe when i'm gonna skip even if i love the movie and i love the beatles but i'm gonna skip that uh we're not talking about the beatles right here dj and college radio station everything she says one okay we actually just went car oh we actually just went karaoke in new york she continues and you haven't heard you haven't done karaoke until you've done it with me everyone is like oh no i don't want to go with you because it seems like she's like the queen of karaoke kind of cute funny so they drag their feet but the second they get there she gives a knowing smile okay you have to remember that when you do karaoke you pick the most ridiculous songs right so man's and i saying don't stop believing born to run born to be wild that would be funny to see that, that those two doing that um but in the middle of the night i looked at him and i said i'm gonna sing one of your songs <laughs> i was going I was gonna sing one of your songs and I was just he thought it was a threat more than a joke but then I saw lunchbox in the karaoke book I read do not think that people have lunchbox by Marilyn Manson and the spooky kids in the karaoke book in a bar I know this is New York so maybe but no I don't think so I think she's making this whole thing up um, but anyway, lunchbox in the book, you know, the book that you're choosing the songs you want to sing, right? I don't think he thought that I knew the songs, his songs. Evan clearly liked to surprise people. So I went up and I just screamed and I sang. I sang the top of my lungs, sat back, and he looked at me and said, I'm so in love with you right now. You have no idea. She seems to be floating about her chair. It was really awesome she's telling the story to this guy so he says that she seems to be floating about the chair about the chair it was really awesome so she said i'm going to sing one of your songs see this is the lolita thing that i'm talking about it's like just luring him in with the with, with his weakness we know manson is really proud of his work um so of course he's gonna go and say i know your work oh my god he's gonna be like hmm really 
cool because he really he's really he is proud of his work he's not insecure about it he's confident about his work so saying to him i know one of your songs i'm going to sing your song now and the song is called lunchbox and i'm going to sing it you know what's going to happen you know the guy's going to be like oh my god and this is exactly what she did it's what she did oh oh lord anyway um now she goes back to talk about oh my god about her movie again okay at least in this interview she's talking about her work usually she doesn't she only talks about the guy she's with or the girl she's with i can't believe it okay he said i'm so in love with you right now oh my goodness um so we have so we have her going on this whole i have 50 pairs of hardship glasses collecting it my mom told me just because i'm homeschooled it doesn't mean that i can stay at home all day uh, reading lolita my mom told me lolita was trash but i was dressed as lolita all the time when i went to meet him the first time i was dressed as lolita and i was wearing hardship glasses he got inspired by that and he made a bunch of songs about about her and even he made a video with her in it the hardship glasses video also, you're talking about how much you love the vintage style. And how this journalist is saying how you look like a 1950s housewife. Okay, you were into that. Not necessarily he was forcing it on you. You were into that. And then the whole thing about telling, you know, telling her mom that she likes that and she's going to do what she's going to do. And she's going to read what she's going to read. And it, it seems, it smells rebellion. It doesn't smell abuse. It smells rebellion 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 to hollywood trying to be edgy rebellion rebellion to towards um the industry because they want her you know she's blue eyes and blonde hair and they want her to be like the girl next door and she was like fuck it no i'm gonna be crazy and dark and i'm gonna be with this rock star this is whole i'm not saying that she planned she planned this whole thing from then to now but in that moment she did she planned it uh then whatever happened in the middle who knows okay and there's more uh gq magazine 2008 look if somebody can watch the video and say whoa i feel less weird now then that's great somebody got to stand up for the freaks haha <laughs> see see what i mean she thinks she's standing up for the freaks by doing a video that she's kissing the boyfriend her boyfriend man said in fake blood okay she's being so weird She's been so edgy. And she's sitting in a magazine. Like somebody has to stand up for the weirdos. Like she's doing the world a favor. Right? She's doing a world a favor by being bisexual. And talking about it. And now in 2008. She was doing a world of the world a favor. By being weird. And making a video. And talking about it. And she stand up for the goth kids. Girl, come on. Like I was a goth kid. You know. I've always been a goth kid. <laughs> always. Always. Once a goth, always a goth. But trust me, if I have to say that anybody show me that being weird was different, I will have say maybe David Bowie and maybe Madonna in the 90s and maybe Kurt Cobain and those people kind of inspired me to be different. But those are the things that you know about yourself. You don't just go and rub it and say it. Like, and just, anyway, just to make yourself... Um, more important like the world needs you evan we need you we don't know what to do if you don't tell us how to be bisexual we don't know how to be bisexual we don't know <laughs> how to be weird I, I mean i learned from you when i was watching the hardship glasses video until then i didn't know it was weird no i'm, I'm being sarcastic because this is ridiculous that she thought, thinks of herself so highly we talked this for almost an hour we mostly incredulous and and even relative with most exuberance that she say things like when we first met he took up he took me up to the roof oh my god it's always a different story in each magazine uh to just uh shoot pellet guns with a like a bb gun at nothing hopefully man and hopefully at nothing you should nobody people will be surprised at the kind of healthy loving relationship and fun relationship we have i highlighted this before i read it and it doesn't and if it doesn't work out, I will never blame it on the fact that he is Marilyn Manson. 
If it doesn't work out, I won't ever blame it on the fact that he's Marilyn Manson. I asked about their home life. And then she says, he snores louder than anybody I ever heard. And he, she talks about him snoring and how cute it is. And which, you know, domestic life is okay. Um, she talks about his snoring for like f five paragraphs. I asked her about the music video, the one with the sex thingy, which Everett Wood explains was not real. This is how the conversation goes. So, what inspires the video? Evan Richard Wood responds, We made it for each other. I just wanted to show that it's okay to have different weird ideas about romance. And the idea of the video, so we're kissing and it's raining blood on us. And for me, that was one of the most romantic moments in my entire life. Really, the person says, really. She says, honestly, because that's how we were really feeling at the time. Even though ugliness can be all around you, you can literally be in a thunderstorm of blood if you look past that, you find real love. I'm like sick. I'm gonna be sick. Just the way she talks. I mean, I, and I, it's not this is no disrespect to Marilyn Manson in the video and that song. I think it's a good song, but the way that she's trying, she's making it about herself. She can't just say, "Hey, I'm only an actress on a music video. I'm gonna shut up." No, she has to make it. She has to exhibit herself and say. The, the thunder of blood and how um, they were doing that to prove a point. At first of all, I don't think they're doing that to prove a point. I think it's just visuals and it looked great on the video. But she's making it political. She was doing this in 2008. We are in 2021 and she's still making everything she does political. Being bisexual is political. Being a goth is political. It's like she's breaking all these rules by sleeping with rock stars or sleeping with girls. You're not a rule breaker. You're just a person who, you're experiencing things. It's not a political statement, Evan, or, you know, Esme, all of them. So, there's some of blood. If you look past that, you find real love. And you know, coma, the same thing with the, with the sex scene. If you're going to have a sex scene, that's what it's going to be. When you are with somebody and you're in love, that's usually what happens. It's not always soft, uh, it's not always soft. Sometimes somebody's screaming or whatever. When you're having sex and you're in love, she says, it's not always soft. Sometimes somebody can be screaming or whatever. But that, that sounds like, I know what I think, but okay. Look, if somebody can watch it and say, whoa, I feel less weird right now, then we did a good job. It's always propaganda from her, always. She can't say, oh, I love the video because the visuals were great and she never mentions the song once and if she liked the song or not, or the director of the video, which is not herself, and say, oh, you know, we were treated really respectfully, the, the director was great towards me and Manson. No, no, no. It's all about her saving the world of the goth and the weirdos because she kissed the dude under the blood. So thanks, Evan. I don't know what would I do. I would not ever be a goth if it wasn't for Evan and Manson. <laughs> we talk, so we talked like this for almost an hour. We most clearly and never Richard would. Okay, okay, I'm going back to the same thing. Oh, just because. Right. And then something else. Just because Evan would... Having relative wood, her name is annoying. And Melanie and Manson are no longer together. That doesn't mean the 23 year old. This is from Nightly Magazine again. This time she's 23 year old. Actress won't always have a soft spot for her ex. He had a hand in raising me. I go back to the same thing. She does the November issue of Nightly Magazine. He had a hand in raising me. I'm always going to love that guy. He's a genius. He's an amazing artist. We're still friends, but some things are not just meant to be. Hmm. Right? All that. Remember when she said that she got, she collected and she got 50 uh, heart shaped glasses and she showed up to their first meeting or first um, dinner date wearing completely uh, head to toe Lolita outfit and all that? Um, right? And all that. That she was doing it to piss off her mom and 
how awesome it was to read Lolita when you were homeschooled and how trashy your mom thought the whole Lolita thing was. So you did it even more. That's, that's, you know, yeah. So then we have this. single mother of a young boy when I was five years old I started working in film and every day why does she have to say she's a single mom this is congress this is not parenting classes what do you get to say you're a single mom who cares specific instances of sexual assault and violence I've experienced that really stick out in my mind in fact they are burned into my brain branded there for life a mental scar that I feel every day my experience with domestic violence was this Toxic mental, physical, and sexual abuse, which started slow but escalated over time, including threats against my life, severe gaslighting and brainwashing, waking up to the man that claimed to love me, raping what he believed to be my unconscious body. And the worst part, sick rituals of binding me up by my hands and feet to be mentally and physically tortured until my abuser felt I had proven my love for them. In this moment, while I was tied up and being beaten and being told unspeakable things, I truly felt like I could die, not just because my abuser said to me, I could kill you right now, but because in that moment, I felt like I left my body and I was too afraid to run, he would find Okay, it's very, it's, I don't wanna make fun of that because that's a horrible thing. If that did happen to her, uh, not by Manson, by somebody else, or anybody watching this, I'm not gonna mention, I'm not gonna say anything about what she just said. What I'm gonna say is, at the end of this video, she said this. She said, I was raped twice. One person was an intimate partner. She didn't name him this, remember back then, this is three years ago. And the second time by, by a bar owner, the owner of a bar in LA. Why we don't know who that guy is? Why we were not after that guy? Why? She's not trying to get that guy out and, 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 and put him on the spot so we can protect people against this bar owner. I'm not saying she's lying. I'm saying that probably is the guy who did the most, the guy who did the, the damage, period. So what are we doing? Maybe the guy's dead. Maybe Manson got him killed. I don't know. Why are we doing? What are we doing? Like, why should never mention the other guy? Because mentioning the other guy doesn't sell. But maybe the other guy did this. Maybe more than one person did this. Maybe, I'm not saying she's making it up. I'm just think to at this point that she's so high up on her hype, on her hype. She's so high on her hype that um, maybe three years ago she wasn't, she didn't know this was going to be so big. But now that it's so big and thanks to Amber Heard and all that, she's not coming down from the high horse. She's not. But I'm not going to make comments about what she's talking about. Um, the unconscious sex act. I'm not. I, mean, I froze. And it was as if I could see myself from the outside. And for the first time in months, I felt something. Utter shame and despair. I had no idea what to do to change my situation. So I went numb. And soon I couldn't feel anything. I wasn't alive. My self-esteem and spirit were broken. I was deeply terrified and that fear lives with me to this day. What makes me more hurt and more angry than the actual rape and abuse itself was that piece of me that was stolen which altered the course of my life. Because of this abuse, my already spiritless person, when I was pushed onto the floor of a locked storage closet by another attacker after hours at a bar, my body instinctively knew what to do. Disappear, go numb, make it go away. Being abused and raped previously made it easier for me to be raped again, not the other way around. That's exactly what I was talking about. She's even saying the closet of some bar in the back of the bar, there was a closet, she was on the floor. This is horrible. This is horrible. This guy is probably out there still doing these things to her, to do all the girls that she did to her, to her back in the day. Why we're not talking about this guy? Why we don't have his name, his Instagram? Why we're not naming him out? Why we're not just go and make a, a, a big thing about him and get him behind bars. Why? I'm very, this is like, I'm just really confused me because it seems like it's in the front of her head. She talks about Manson right now, she's not saying the name, but then she talks about the owner of the bar. Uh, that's not Manson, that's the bar guy, right? I mean, in the back of the bar, there was a closet and she was on the floor of the, of the closet. It sounds awful, I'm not trying to make fun of her. 
I'm really I'm not. I'm, I'm just don't understand her psyche and I don't understand how she put all this together. Um, wrap it all up in a, and then throw it on somebody else, on one person and blame everything on just one person and never took responsibility for anything that she did. I'm not saying that if she was sex, dressed sexy that day, she had it coming. I'm not saying that. Please. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that she cannot avoid the fact that we all know, we all seen the, 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 the testimony of her for the Phoenix Act. And nobody's asking these questions. Why? Why? I don't Not a day it. goes by when I don't hear the words this man whispered into my ear over and over. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. And then my small voice saying back, no, no, no. This is not Manson. This is the man from the, the bar abusing her, saying, but telling her you're going to be fine, you're going to be fine, which is really messed up, which is something that I see that could be happening. The guy is in that state of mind maybe he was drunk maybe he just he was maybe he was obviously an asshole and trying to make the rape be more like an act or we're just having fun in the back of the bar and she's suffering and i'm not making fun of her right i'm getting pissed off on myself because i know this is gonna look like i made, I made fun of her in the beginning of the video and for the first hour because of the stuff that she said when she was 19 i'm not making fun of the stuff she say now in 2006 in 2016 i'm not but it's still to this day, it makes me mad that she is not even saying this person's name uh, to nobody. That otherwise, we would know, right? Because she's always airing all the laundry out, so we will know. I want to know who this guy is and, and what's up with him. What's up? What's his freaking problem, man? No, 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 no. Until it faded into nothing. And I remember the feeling of shutting down or freezing and utter shock taking over, and I couldn't even make a sound. I felt a piece of me disappear, a piece that has never returned. In other words, I was not fine, and I am not fine. So often we speak of these assaults as no more than a few minutes of awfulness, but the scars last a lifetime. Even though these experiences happened a decade ago, I still struggle with the aftermath. My relationship suffers, my partners suffer, my mental and physical health suffers. Seven years after my rapes, plural, I was diagnosed with long-term PTSD, which I had been living with all that time without knowledge about my condition. I s plural. She said rapes. Plural. Simply thought I was going crazy. I struggled with depression, addiction, agoraphobia, night terrors. So many times a sleeping partner of mine has awoken to their love screaming in the night and gasping for air in a pool of sweat. I believe After that. having some sort of vivid dream of my abuser or hearing them say my name so loudly in my ear. The feeling of paralysis returns when there's a loud noise and I'm home alone, convinced someone is coming to hurt me. I stay awake all night clutching a baseball bat, which began to replace my distraught and absent partners as trust and touch became increasingly more difficult. I this is her in Congress. I mean, again, I'm not going to make fun of her. Who talks like that in Congress? Who who makes, who, right, she she told the act. She said that she had um, post-traumatic stress disorder, that she can't sleep. She has sleep paralysis. It's horrible what she's detailing. But where, then she goes to like, I was in a dark room, clenched into a ball. She has this tendency to make things so, you know, like a movie or something. What she's saying is strong enough. She doesn't have to add lip to it. Because what she's saying is very powerful. Why is she's adding this almost poetic things to it? You don't have to make rape poetic, Evan. You don't have to talk about it like it's a movie. And she goes from like a very, um, I think that it's very, that it's real. I do. It's real. Uh, sleep paralysis is a real thing. Panic attacks are real things. Trauma is a real thing. And she goes, talk about it from that. And, and then she lose, she she lost me when she goes that she is in the darkness, clenching a ball. I don't know why. This is why people don't take her serious uh, back then and still now. Until she names this other person, I'm going to have a hard time. Um, no. I'm not going to believe her. And it sucks that, that I... That, not being a woman, just being a human being, I have to think and be so jaded and so cynical about it and not believe another woman. But I'm sorry, until she names the other person and has some type of proof on the other person as well and on mass and more proof, uh, that what she has, she got no proof. Um, maybe we can just, maybe we can analyze that and maybe we can just 
get to the bottom of why she why she's doing this why she went and to the first date on wearing the heart shaped glasses and why she told her mom I'm gonna do whatever I want and read whatever I want and I'm gonna dress whatever whatever I want and why she said all those good things about him in the magazines and why she end up in a bar getting rape on the floor and who is this person and then again this is the first time that I actually I heard I heard this a hundred times but it's the first time that I catch on the word rapes and not rape so plural who is this guy I mean I wanna kick his ass <laughs> right I mean <clears throat> it you don't have to um, add lip to it you can tell she's an actress I don't think anybody go to Congress well nobody can go to Congress but um, to court and talks that way um, so that's why it makes it makes it hard for um, some people a lot of people to take what she says with a grain of salt because another another part that I played so many times before and everybody on YouTube played so many times before she said that he was telling her um, this person was telling her what to wear and how to speak and what I'm going to sleep and what to eat and if not, not sleep and stay awake with him and then you have her you know this interviews that I was little clips that I was reading of her saying that she was super okay with the lifestyle and she loved it and then she felt that she would she found herself he had a race he had a hand in raising me i'm always gonna love the guy he helped me find myself express my true self and take risk i didn't have to read it i know that's what she said and after the fact in 2010 they were not together anymore and then something kind of curious in 2014 when um instance father uh, and, and no, the mom first passed away. Um, she posted on Twitter. She made a post saying, "A very good, a good, an old friend of mine lost somebody they love today. My heart is with him." And then I looked it up the dates, and it matches. This can be a coincidence. There can be somebody else that lost some somebody, and then she's giving condolences and saying rest in peace to this other person but I think it's related to Manson because it was the same week that he lost his mom hmm so and then again there was another interview in 2014 only two or two years before this that she also talks about him and how much he helped her and to express and even find out that she was bisexual because he expressed Explore, you know, she could explore so many things with him and all that. There's that interview in Rolling Stone magazine that she defends him um, because he was in some type of heat four years ago. He's always in some type of heat, but he was in some type of heat four years ago, and she defends him. They were talking about all the things about him and having her brother stay in his house and getting kicked out from his house and. And she defend him. She say, "Man, so would ever do something like that to my brother, or to anybody." <sighs> hmm. I. It's like I have all this. Um, I felt really bad for what she's saying over there. In that first part of the video, and then when she started talking on the other video, she's talking about sleep deprivation and um and food deprivation and sleep deprivation and being cold and the walls being black and being cut with a knife and then you go and read Ashley Morgan's Esme Bianco's and Ashley Waters so her and three three more women saying the same thing cut with a knife black walls and black floors in the apartment above the liquor store sleep deprivation cold house uh, food deprivation and cut with a knife um, the only one thing that there's only Esme said that the other ones didn't because they can't is the human trafficking because Esme was in the UK so she made that really whatever she thought she was smart at the moment but it sounds very stupid now when we talk about what real human trafficking is um, that's the only thing that it differs from everybody everything else all the Everything else is exactly the same. The only thing that is different is the human trafficking from Esme 
and in this case the fact that she um, said she's saying allegedly that she got raped by somebody else that is not a famous person that is an owner of the bar that assaulted on the floor in the back of a closet I want to know who this guy is don't you so that's this that's the thing I mean you can't um, you can't always go for the space gold and the easy target. And Manson has been the easy target since I was in high school um, for a lot of things. And, and and now it just seems so so dirty. It seems like all these women are doing is just they're doing dirty uh, campaign. It's a comp- it's a political campaign against him or against all men. Who knows? I think it's mostly against men, period. Um, and she's not doing it for money. Esme's doing it for money. Ashley Morgan is doing it for money. Ava Rocha Wood is just doing it because there's something in her head that she's not okay with. She's not okay with her past. She's ashamed, maybe, of the things that she did with him in the bedroom or stuff like that. And now it's like, oh, shoot. Fuck. I feel horrible that I did all those things. I feel dirty. Um, and instead of just go, you know, go to therapy and talk about it, or if you really feel like you've been raped, go to the cops and talk about it, get a social worker, counselor, social workers, police officers, whatever, and talk to them about it. No, you just post it on Instagram. See, that's the, the, that's why a lot of people, even people that don't like Manson, even people that hate Manson, (laughs) is still don't believe these girls. Um, especially the last three ones that I just mentioned because they took to Instagram and Facebook and Twitter instead of going to the police station. My first video ever was, I was saying how Instagram is not a police station. And then after I said that a week after that, Esme went to court in LA and filed against Manson. So I'm glad that she did because that is going to give them the chance to respond and to maybe open a trial and it's gonna be it's gonna suck because I think it's painful for the both sides and it's stressful but hopefully he stays tall like Johnny did and so everybody for defamation including her because they can just read those interviews in court that I just did, and this is the same person, this is the same person, this is not her having a double personality disorder, a multiple personality disorder, Uh, no, she never said she had that, she could have said that, and then she can say, well, I did, I did all that, I blacked out, I don't know who that person is anymore, that person was, I have uh, multiple personality disorders, that would have been smart, no, she never said she had that, so when she said back in, 2008, 2009, 2010, all the way to 2014, is her and her love for him, platonic, not being together anymore, is still admiring the guy. Yeah. And this person, the raper in the back of the bar. The bar. It's horrible. That's what I... There's a part there that is missing that she's not telling us. And for somebody that says everything all the time, that is always screaming to the world, she's bi, she's a single mom, she cut her hair short, she's wearing a suit at the Academy Awards, like she invented that too. Um, She's always out there with what she does to change things. Why she's not out there talking about this other person? Um, It beats me. No pun intended. That was a bad joke.